Hello. We are back. Yes, as always, with my blurry camera. Oh, I have to start OBS to set up the focus. Anyways. Oh, how is it going with how is it going with your robot? Uh, I will talk in the backstage. <laughs> okay. No, actually, it's it's fine. Like I'm surprised that uh, today the robots were working not perfect, but so much better than last week. And okay. I'm more confident now. We will be happy. We will be happy to see some images of the robots yeah. in the chat. <laughs> Somehow. Yeah, maybe we can we can do practice from the exhibition. Oh, I don't think so. The Wi-Fi connection is really bad there, so I don't think it's gonna happen. <laughs> um I was thinking about so I said to no, I guess this is a chat. So yeah. I I arrived very late yesterday here and in brussels and then so today i have this i was supposed to start working with joe for this thing for russell electronica right and then so i think i was gonna meet him on tuesday so tomorrow maybe but then then there was this i was a bit like um, anxious be like thinking that oh okay i mean bit with pressure feeling with pressure um then then i start thinking I fall asleep and then I start thinking that my pressure in a way, I mean, I was kind of like start pressuring myself for the technology, right? Because then I thought, uh, I don't know exactly what is that I I should do like in the project. Um, so in a way, this is, this happens, this, 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 is a, this is a bit of, of, of a struggle, I think is. But at the same time, it's a it's an opportunity, I guess, to learn. It happens also in seeds, or in, yeah, let's in seeds I experience something similar. That is, um, because in a way I know a little bit of everything. I can jump in everything if I want. Um, I'm I'm competent in, in that in that sense. I will be competent. I'm not mastering any of those topics. When I will say that I'm more close to my knowledge, what is close is to choreography or to structuring something to direct something um nevertheless then if i i can find myself losing to things that i like right so then um in the project this that we do in arts electronica there is a a, a focused uh, developer so somebody who's working with the in the back end and front end i think of the project so I don't have to uh, worry about these things. Um, there is something with a data visualization that I think it was running through Touch Designer. So I thought, I, I mean, before I left to Greece already, I was thinking maybe I should check kind of like a study somehow or practicing something or with Touch Designer in that regard or with some something with uh, JavaScript um but of course i didn't have the time of course because it was just i just arrived but then i'm sharing this because it's kind of like that's my personal like i felt like um what is like what should be ready for you know in terms of technology and i think that's the, mm -hmm. what i'm trying to share in the chat is that in this case with joe kaimo we're doing this project that is about is, is the framework is called an, an the excitement research and is based on on an IoT device wearable that it measures the level of heat that your earlobe have has and then then it will change into color and then with that information we do some data visualizations that's the technology aspects of it but then what actually what it makes the project works is the poetics that we create around the project that we said is an excitement research so then we said like depending of how excited you are, the light becomes more red, uh, as less engaged you are, it's more blue and all the colors in between. And we create an engagement between 
the the audience uh, or the participant, uh, the person who participates in the project, and we as scientific, we 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 create uh, uh, poetics around the whole thing. We we put it as a pseudo scientific uh, research, and we do performative things around the project. Um, so then, so yeah, then I was struggling a bit like with the technology because the the problem i mean my struggle is that since i don't have too much communication with you in the past years maybe more than one year i don't know exactly i just saw him like for one day shortly or two days shortly and the last six months and then more or less i kind of catch up what is the project technologically wise what is but going been working together for some time right yeah we work we work like uh together like uh closely between 2017 and 2019 i think um yeah 2017 like for one year and a half we were uh working closely and then after i have to start paying more paying more attention to my studies because it was taking too much uh, of my time mm -hmm. in the beginning of the pro in, in the beginning of the collaboration and i think maybe that's interesting uh, to share in the practices my role was more the designer role, role. and I, yeah so which was like joe kind the original idea comes from joe joe's an inventor and he has this crazy way to to approach his work i think his background is um product design but then he's doing has done different things like uh, he's now finishing this ma <coughs> masters also this is like his third masters now he's finishing this one in in Linz, but also I think he started studying mathematics at some uh, beginning. So he's somebody who is really into learning things and has this uh, a drive to just learn. And and he's like, I saw him always like this <coughs> crazy inventor. He likes to invent things to create like it's kind of like the image, the stereotype of an inventor. That's Joe like. He likes to put things together and then boom, he creates things that make not too much sense for people. But he makes something out of it, like through poetics and, and uh, his artistic approach. <clears throat> that was not like a quotation mark here is I'm when we when I started working with seats in the first project that it was Seeker, that it was building this spaceship, Joe was with me in the first meeting or in the second meeting or something. I, I invited him because back then, it was, which was three years ago, I was working with him often. Then when we were there and we were in this big collect uh, of people, it started just brainstorming about how to build a spaceship because that was the main concept of Seeker. And to live there, Joe started saying things that um, there were, it was, the, let's say we were sitting, said 20, 30 people. And what Joe said some things like two or three times, it was completely off. You know, nobody really got what he was saying, or it was it was kind of a misunderstood between a joke, no joke, or I don't know. Like I remember he was kind of saying something with a toilet and something. Uh, it was kind of misunderstood the communication there. Um, but it's just to say, like for instance, like. I think Joe is like a living piece of art somehow, I think, <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a positive way, I think. And that was my role when I entered the project with him, because my then, back then I was really into designing art, which is my project in trying to uh, use design methodologies in, in artistic production. So I was really trying to just be a designer within the framework and trying to not be the artist, to relieve the joy for the tension and then I will do the production things and the age, the all the, the the front things, and then he will be relying to be the artistic and his things he needed to do. Um, that was the way how we were working. And okay, so that's like the, that's the how we were working. So that's this the story, uh, the way on how we work, and now. So we are not working for one year and a half. Now we go to Ars Electronica, which is very important uh, for my career, I guess for Joe's career also. Um, and also, but so I have this gap of one year and a half on the project 
in technology wise. Also, I know he was not very active with it, but nevertheless, he was working with Peter Jan, which is a developer from time to time. Um, so when I went to see them, <clears throat> he explained me some things that he was doing, uh, like technology uh, wise. And then I check, oh, okay. So I got kind of like an idea. We discussed fast, like, okay, this is the open call in Ars Electronica. We fast grow the text, what we said in a way, like open call in Linz for all scientists around Linz, like uh, to research about excitement. And that's what he joked. So we grow this together fast, really fast. And then he creates something and then he put it out. I don't know in which channel. I don't know where, because I'm very out. I don't. I don't understand really well how in which framework is working this in Ars Electronica. But then it's, mm -hmm. that's, that's something that in the way working with him, at some point I was struggling because of the way how he communicates. But it's just part of how we, uh, yeah, or, yeah, that's, that's the way how we, the communication goes, I guess. I cannot push him because it's uh, at some point, let's say it was part of the things that I was doing before is pushing because I was trying to do my work as a designer, or like, like, you know, being very professional at some point I said like, you need, I remember we, we make a contract and I said like, then you hire my services and then I provide services, you know, but then you have to pay me like clearly in a contract and these kind of things. So at some point I was really pushing these things. Uh, but now, now after one year and a half and more, connected also to my artistic side I guess and then then I started struggle a bit of like thinking okay okay technologically wise and then I started going in my head because I was falling asleep oh, okay this this or many things there might be but I have no clue to be honest because I, I need to see him and see Peter Jana mm -hmm. and not only understand what is the project because that's what I understood the last time I saw them but is what is Joe seeing in his head? Because that's that's something that I have to translate. Um, what he his wants vision. to do. Exactly. What is his vision? And 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 I basically need to translate his words when 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 I when I go with him in the next days, like to for me to see how can I what can I add into this? How, how can I make this possible through uh, in a way then it's through a structuring, through choreographing elements in the, in, 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 in the space there in, for a certain time. Um, but then, so I think I was like this long introduction is to say that um, was like, so rather than, than worrying about technology in, in many cases, I think, I think this is connected to the last thing that we were spoken, this text where technology is so dominant, let's say, you know, when in the in the, the text, uh, in this- uh, The article. Text that you shared, how was the name of the text you shared the last time? Uh, I forgot the name, but it's about the, the dance tech pieces, right? Yeah, it was dance tech yeah. pieces. So where technology, can you maybe like do a short introduction of this, like uh, just to say what was it? No, not an introduction, yeah. but yeah, yeah, just to summarize, like the summarize, yes, yeah, in the, this funding uh, structure they produced. Well, they um, how they say they worked with uh, four different groups of dancers, choreographers, and they created four pieces with um, people from the technical side, uh, like using motion capture and things like that, sensors, uh, cameras, and they created four pieces. And that that's the first, first part of the research. And then they did the evaluation of the research by doing the questionnaires, interviewing the audience members who are, you know, uh, first time seeing the piece. And the idea is that how they relate the body movements to the sensors, do they get the connection between um, the dance and technology right but then, then but in a way like the, the it was an academic paper right it was like the yes. idea through the academic and paper, scientific like, yeah it's scientific like the idea like, like to in a way quantify like effectiveness somehow like or, qu or quantify like was it good or bad basically um through interviews right uh, in a scientific way 
so um, I was thinking that um, uh, in relation to what I just said is that when technology is a, is a main thing in the, like I remember sometimes somebody was asking me in the Impulse Dance a few times, like what is digital dance? And then I said like digital dance is something is because it's, it's part of the things that are researched in, in, in for the school is where is the digital dance is where the uh, technology is takes a big part of or if not the main part of the dance production is through a digital means. So that's in short, like in a way how I understand what is digital dance or dance and tech is where the technology takes a big part of the production, if not the main production. Um, but you also so, said the dance practice, like kind of like when you summarize it, like it's also not just part of the production, but it's also become part of the practice. Is right. that important? Right. Yeah. 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 Because yeah, it's true. And then so in, in regards to so what I was saying is like in this project that I do with Joe, like then with the main, the core of this is that there is an IoT device that it is uh and it is it and it basically it has an RGB and it changes the color depending on how hot is your earlobe. Um so it's very important, but it just gives the excuse for other things to happen around it. Um so and I'm making a connection with that because so let's say think technologically wise, there are a lot of aspects in this project because we have the sensor. The sensor has some battery that uh, you know working with electronics. So then always there is an improvement. I don't know if Joe changed that battery, but we have some problems before because we could not use it more than 20 minutes, but some of the batteries were not working, blah blah blah, and blah blah blah, blah all these kind of things. So there is this, there is the this uh, the IoT, but the IoT also is sending to a server, and the server has been in different ways developed. I think the latest one is just a phone that we use. We try to use now. If I understood now well, we always have we always have problems with the positioning of the devices because basically, so basically the data that we wanted to use to data visualize is temperature and positioning and then relate and then uh, distance between uh, individuals and based on all these three aspects create visuals um, but the, the positioning of the device was always giving troubles um, so we did this through beacons and different systems but if you have as uh, with beacons, there was some delay because that information has to send in real time to a server and the whole thing. So always we have problems with the beacons. And if I understood well the last time, I think they were trying to use the GPS, not the GPS, but the Bluetooth signal of phones. Then if you have your IoT device, then it will connect to a phone and then uh, that phone will connect to some server, and then from there, basically, we traced, uh, we try, we triangulate uh, this the the positioning of the device. So device one in relation to device two or three or four, and in that way, somehow have maybe not accurate position on on a space, but more in terms of distance. You know, in term uh, through signal through Bluetooth signal. You see what I mean? The, yeah, I the understand. Distance. It's more about talking to the chat, <laughs> talking to the audience. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, so, but yeah, but basically, so as I, as I, well, as I mentioned then, it, is that um, it's a project where there is a lot of technical uh, matters to be considered and to iterate over and over and over and over. So, and then I was worrying of that because I have been off the project for one year and a half. So if I tried to, I could try to just jump in and try to understand everything because in a way I could understand what is the developer doing, what is Joe doing, uh, but it just makes no sense, like trying to run in that way, you know, it makes no, it's, it's not working for I mean, nobody. The time is limited and also your resources limited. Exactly, right? Yeah. But then I, what I thought is interesting is then, then I woke up with this epiphany and then I put it in the, in the, in the hybrid document and I started writing. Um, I said, what I say is like, 
I wait. I will share my screen and uh, for a second. Wait a sec. Ah, oh, why do I need to do this all the time? I don't know. Okay. This is a, this this is a really Zoom thing. Yeah. Yeah. Why do we use Zoom? That's <laughs> a question. But because it's, it's easy to use it. Yeah. So wait, move away. I move it. So yes, there's this life. Yeah, I was thinking like I, so life that expresses itself to the fullest through living, you know, like just living without holding back. So are those moments when you feel or what I feel in light, uh, I would have felt enlightenment or when there is some deep connection with Gaia or when, you know, these moments where, let's say, for instance, I just come back from Greece. So I'm just very relaxed. And then after a long sleep, I just lay down in my bed at some point and the cat passes and I was just watching to the, like the curtain move a little bit. And I was not thinking, you know, I was just living. Like that's the life of the fullest. I don't have more thought than just, this is nice, right? Like, and that kind of connection that you have that through the, in different ways, in different moments. I guess when you have drastic changes on space, like when you're traveling, but you have these big uh, changes in your spaces, your body is, uh, is, is easy to change your mainframe of, of the main space, how you perceive life. So in, my, in that case, I was just thinking like, oh, this is actually like, yeah, then I just wrote like, I was thinking that uh, I was making this connection through the communication that cares about gesture rather than the content. Like I said, like, I make an analogy between life, so life that it lives through living in a way, if that makes sense, in a way, if you can think like as expressing the expression somehow, it's, uh, it's life okay. that expressing itself through living, yeah, without holding back basically of anything or expecting anything just by the mere act of being alive and okay with what is that at that moment and then i make a relation that i was thinking that the communication that cares about the gesture rather than the content um because we talk about this um i think i think that that's the way who i enter in the let me just try to go through this to see if i make sense Communication that cares about the gesture rather than the content, agency, proliferation, and creation. Yeah, one can say that the creation of gesture making or blog making is one of the best practices. Um, saying this is in relation to the, the gesture. Like what we said the last chat that we have, at some point I was trying to introduce this I don't know exactly how, how we, what was the, the, the communication that we have, but that I just mentioned it, that from my point of view is a problem about communication. Um, I think it was in relation to, yeah, the concert, the concert and the dance piece, because the audience have no problem to understand what is the concert. So, uh, but the audience will have a problem to go to the dance piece and then uh, if, if the dance is not working somehow. Hmm. Uh, I, I mentioned that that's a problem of communication in the sense of like, yeah, the, you don't understand what is the message there? What is your purpose as audience in, in the dance tech piece when it's not working somehow? When it's not working somehow, wait. Uh, yeah, let's, let's say that way. No, because if it's not working, that might, create agency that gives I, okay. yeah, communication. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's really no. tricky. But let's say no, there's no, no yeah. I yeah, like, yeah I, I understand what you mean, like, because you refer that more like as the as a positive as the as the glitch that agents something to happen, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I mean, like, literally, as you, you are audience, you go to the uh, dance and tech, and then you're like, this is just not working. I mean, you don't understand what is it just feels odd that it feels odd not in a good way you're like right. this is just boring somehow and then you have people who answer that interview in a certain way it's not it's, it's not working it's less functional more functional or 
something like this. <coughs> but then I then I was thinking of this. This is and this is about the gesture. I think that's what we do. Then that is uh, so it's a it's communication that cares about the gesture, but not the meaning or the content. At some point, I think I found something in in, in Wikipedia. It says like. Or, It says like you want to read it yeah it says like gesture has also been taken up within queer theory ethnics studies and their intersection in performance studies as a way to think about how the moving body gains social meaning socialist evangelios uses the idea of gesture to mark a kind of refusal of finitude uncertainty and links gesture to his ideas of ephemera this guy draws on the African-American dance and drag queen performers, Kevin Evans, to articulate his interest in what queer gesture might mean, but what, uh, yeah, his interest is not in what queer gesture might mean, but what they might perform, which is the same that what I'm saying here in somehow. It's not about the content or the meaning, but is. In, in in these words it might perform i said this is, is about the gesture itself um and then i was trying to understand a bit so what is this gesture so i was going through um and some things that i found um yeah what what is the gesture for you oh well after after reading this it's it might change a lot <laughs> Because it's it's more about the uh, sign, like the meaning. Sign, yeah. I, I thought, but then that's already negated in the text. Then, then yeah, you know, that, that makes sense, right? I mean, the text makes sense that it's not. But it's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting what you're saying because it's true. Like the sign, it is in there. I I found it somewhere in one of these tabs. I don't know what is it, but somebody was saying something else in that relation that. It is about the sign, but yes, somebody was mentioning that is um, so it's a message that can that it that carries more than a sign, like say like symbols because it's not a symbol, yeah, because it's not a symbol. Uh, letters are letters are symbols, uh, so then they are in a way close. And then when you, through language, through linguistics, you can abstract this word somehow or through linguistics or poetics, you can do tricks to try to open the, uh, the language itself. But as a language is very codified, uh, it's a code, it's an enclosed code. Um, but then what I think is interesting is that the gesture in somehow transmits more than the sign or the symbol. If you say it, you can express through, through if I don't know what, what, I, what I'm saying, that, it, that in a way I can express more than my words and my, my limitation in, in my English language to don't know how to express what I know I would like to express to you right now. Through my 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 through my my arms and my hands, hmm. so there is something that it goes beyond. It can it can it goes be it can goes beyond language. It's not language based necessary. Right. Well, I don't know if it's more or less or it's something different. I mean, I guess it depends. And actually, like the the quote in the next paragraph is something I wrote down, and I don't know if you also highlighted it intentionally yeah, 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 or not because it's Absolutely. quite Helen El Bauer, yes. Yeah, yeah. I I just like randomly wrote that uh, read that chapter and uh, thought it's quite interesting that um, basically it's 
along like what you just said, but also like she mentions that language itself is, um, <coughs> I forgot what's the right word, like not metaphor, but you know, like it's also something ambiguous because it also has like the history and everyone takes it differently. So it mm. is codified in a way, but not, I mean, to a certain degree, but it's not completely codified, let's say. I, I forgot how she said it. Um, and, but of course, like her um, interest is to compare language to dance and how dance can be, you know, more ambiguous or like in this example, she says about energy. Um, yeah, frequent use of broad and unspecified terms like energy among teachers and directors, for better or worse, when it comes to discourse, dance is very good at taking advantage of vague. Yeah. So, like, it's a mm -hmm. little bit related to the gesture, or I don't know if it's the same thing, but uh, yeah, it's a uh, yeah, along that, what, what you just said, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what it's, it's about, that's what I put it here, because I start working in the text about, like, some, like, I put it, like, as, as I see it as within communication, uh, because as I mentioned before, this that we speak about is about communication, and, and it's a problem that I saw in when we were discussing this paper about dance and tech effectiveness, if you want, in a scientific uh, uh, spectrum. Um, because if it doesn't matter what it communicates, let's say if it's more within an, an, an art realm uh, or space, an artistic space, then it, then it doesn't matter actually what it communicates. Like it doesn't matter that much. Like, um, but if you want, like, if you want to put it more in academic place, that mm, then it matters somehow that the, the uh, yeah. I think there is a problem of communication when you put dance and tech, there is a problem of communication because I think that's what I put it here. It's like dance, I think contemporary dance is, it, the nature of contemporary dance is, is very abstract. As she mentioned here, the way how I learned class, contemporary classes were way different how I learned ballet classes. Ballet classes, the teacher can give me the whole class by sitting in the, in the, in the chair and she could say like, now, uh, she could qualify the whole class without standing up because there's a codification through hundreds of years of this. So there is a really scientific approach to ballet uh, in that sense. It's, 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 let's say it's codification. Those, the steps are codified. You can make the whole class sitting. In contemporary dance was way different because then the teacher has to go and then she was like, and there's a lot of the singing, like, you know, like, uh, or you will use, use more energy or no, or now, uh, boom, ta, 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 oof. Then depending on the teacher, it will use abstraction of the movement. And there's a lot of the singing. There is no codification. Then from, because it's contemporary, then you might use within the phrase, like now you do a ronde jam, for instance, within the contemporary dance, phrase uh but the the in, in the yeah as a whole the teacher will have to dance because it's the way how she transmits uh the body phrase to us as students so the nature what i'm saying is like the nature of contemporary dance is is very abstract uh as she was saying here in this text um mm -hmm. and i think the nature of technology is very direct uh it's very functional so yeah. uh because of that that's what i that's what I, I i try to make the connection there is a problem in communication or uh, uh there is something around this idea that i'm trying to share i don't know if you get what i'm trying to say yeah maybe you can stop the screen sharing um yeah i also wanted to like talk about a bit of like what i, I have been doing these weeks because uh not stop video but uh, yeah because like today it was like last week uh, we've been working on the robots and this week we have 
uh, more people, uh, dancers are there, and we're going to film um, as a dance piece at the end of the week with the robots. And it's not the first time we met. Like I've seen them like last year around the same time. Uh, we had some rehearsals, quote unquote, because the robots were not really working back then. And now it's kind of working. Uh, but this time, like I, I just decided like not to have much interaction with the people because like it's just like what you said about the you know role as a designer or programmer or artist. But like if I'm involved in this creative process of like like exactly like a you know it's a contemporary dance piece. It's not about the form, but it's about the energy and how you you know receive from other dancers, from the robots. And if I'm like, I can sit there and talk with them, but if I'm involved in this discourse, then it will, I don't know, it's not something I want as a programmer to do it because as a programmer, I really need to, you know, think in a different, not think in a different way, but it's, it's very different. Like, it's not like how we do it in the best practices that, you know, whatever, is fine. In that case, I think it's so much easier. But in this case, like we have a choreography <coughs> that's set, and we don't want robots to, you know, stop moving at one point, which sometimes happens. And if that happens, I have to fix it somehow. So it's like a totally different mentality, like approach to as a programmer and as a dancer. Yeah. So this time, like I said, you know, like I, I I'm not gonna do the dance stuff like I'll really step back and but uh, I, I'm not but, gonna but yeah but I think this is this is in revelation exactly is um to it I think you were using your own words one in the last chat you were saying that in your uh perception we talk about this like the, there was not too much development time for in the pieces in the for the in the four pieces were that were right. interviewed, yeah. In the and then we yeah. we spent we spent some time speaking about like the idea of the choreographer doesn't really have the sensibility that if you want to create a embodied experience of technology and dance, so a synergy rather than functionality, then you need to have a long or have a a different uh, developing time. Um, so in relation to what you're saying is that. You cannot do this in this piece, although it might be interesting, because you have a deadline that is now. So you just need to make it work somehow. You need to deliver something, right? Um, I think it would be different if you would be, I don't know, if you have good conditions and you have six months to work on this somehow, then you can give more space for other experience to happen, perhaps. Hmm. I mean, we had time, but I didn't do <laughs> anything further. <laughs> I mean, so but so so but wait, but but I think that could be interesting. That maybe in the in the chat, like if you did not do it, is because somehow there was not, uh, it was not working. Like you know, it should for if the intention. I I am not saying that that's the intention in this piece, but if the intention is that the choreographer or like dance and technology blend, what I think is what we do in the best practice. I think they blend um so if the intention is dance and technology blend uh and creates a, a synergy then you should you should have understood that somehow or you should have feel that somehow but if you did not it's because something was off mm. you know um and that's yeah, interesting me, yeah it's like i don't know what's a good analogy but for example, if you want to use, I don't know, laser cutter or any kind of tool that, you know, you have to turn it on and you have to make sure that everything's right. And, you know, you have proper ventilation, all these things that you have to check and then you can start doing things, um, but you cannot go back, you know, you cannot just stop the process. Like everything is like really structured, like just to use a tool. And for me, yeah. the robots are the same. Like you have to turn on the computer and you have to turn on the tools like in the right order. And then 
also you have to be in a specific place to use it. You cannot just bring the robots home and you can use it. it doesn't work that way. Um, so all these like conditions that makes me like just not like willing to work, not, not <laughs> willing to work is, is maybe a bit harsh, but like I don't want to play with it uh, for my let's say like free time or like for my creation because it's just too much and like I already like in there like if I'm really following the instruction like it's already using a lot of in like space um, yeah. resource and in the best practices like it's kind of similar we have to use OBS we have to use live lab but it's like you know it's not that strict it, if you mess it up it's it's not going to break no. i mean you can just I, restart I, it but don't don't, don't you think the problem of what the problem I, maybe not the problem but what it makes the situation different is that the robots should work i mean you, you know what i mean what if somebody tell you there are these balls like they are robots you know like but but do, I mean, if you will have been more, if you have, will have, if you would have had more uh, freedom with the robots, the way how you appro approach the robots, then might be could be different because maybe I don't know you not necessarily you use them all the time. You see what I mean? Like maybe if they don't work. If one is not working or two are not working for some reason, uh, it's different. What I'm saying is like you, your your offset now is the the robots work. From then we'll see, mm. but your offset already is like the the technology must be on and functional all the time, and already yeah. that's very stressful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah, it, it, that's right. Like if it something breaks, then everything is gone like you have to make yeah, sure that everything's exactly. working and then and then, okay, on top and then of that you, you can start do something yeah 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 and that the, that offset already is very it's a pressure is very pressured yeah 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 that's that's what i meant by like it takes so much resource to yeah. just to run it and that's already like enough for me <laughs> like yeah yeah i understand but could be cool like to I guess we will have opportunities in the future, like maybe with motion capture and stuff like, you know, with more uh, hardware devices, maybe in motion bank or something like that, that when we have uh, more hardware involved and all these steps we normally should come. Um, might be interesting like to, to, to research, because I mean, what I'm saying is like, let's say, you cannot you cannot escape the steps you know let's say mm -hmm. like one thing is one i mean you cannot escape uh i don't know if something is running through a server you need to start a server running you need the steps you need you need to step in a certain way so you cannot yeah. escape those things but what i think is interesting is then it's more like understand uh, to be fluid uh not yet to be to not necessarily be depending of if that works um so then i think if i imagine within the practice and then we said like we're gonna use motion capture and kinex said we have three kinex and the three kinex since that we have like a real time uh mesh uh, based on three kinex but they need to be activated in certain ways so the one two three say for some reason the one is not activated first and then let's say the, the 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 perfect image of the body is not captured because of the way how the Kinex were activated me um yeah what i'm trying to say with, with this example that might be a bit complicated in the chat it's is something to happen it's like it's, little, it's, little, it's like i think the problem or i mean what i right now feel is a pro is a problematic i think in this context is aiming for perfection uh, because it's just very unlikely um and more working with technology than we know like this is just not gonna happen something is gonna break so um i think aiming for perfection 
or not even perfection. Actually, it's far away from perfection. So just aiming for uh, baseline working, you know, just 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 passing 50% above working um, is is just asking too much, uh, yeah. you know, like uh, not not allowing it might not work, you know, like, because yeah, I think in the practice we are more like from 50 down, like 50% down, like it might not work something. If I will start thinking in, in the setups that I do before do a practice, then I know before because already I experienced this fucking light one time came here and break my 3000 euros computer, for instance, like in one practice. Um, so this kind of thing might happen all the time. So because of, but so because we have practicing for more than one year is that uh, we know that in a way like we assume things are not gonna work. That was our baseline for the hybrid performance. Right. We know it's not gonna work. Basically, basically that's what we said in a way. I mean, if you really translate it, like, assumption, you know, and that was a fact as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but but I think that's so cool. No, I think that's very cool, and it's the thing to underline in the chat is like people. If you guys are working with technology, assume things are not gonna work, and that will relieve you because then you need to work creatively around that. Otherwise, you will be stressed as now auto right now. <laughs> trying to make the fucking robots working. This is a stress. Or me thinking like in the Ars Electronica thingy with the server and stuff like, it's out of my, you know, it's, anything could happen. Mm. So uh, I think it's a, a way to approach this art and tech will be more from the point of view, <laughs> just like not just assuming it might not work. Like not be is that doesn't mean to be pessimist and say like it's not gonna work, but just assuming it might not work. So that's what I was saying. Like we will be more fifty percent down, you know, in the inputs than like <laughs> or like ninety percent actually. <laughs> <laughs> but um, can I share uh, something? Please. Where is it? So I made this. Uh, maybe optimize for video clip. I made this yesterday just for fun. It's a sketch that has morphing and I was quite happy that like after all these you know we do like random stuff I could still make something like this which made me happy I mean the code is not so long it's in p5.js um, but what I want to say is like like for this one like if you mess up one of the parameters then it won't look good like I don't know maybe like this see like there's like a glitch right that's and interesting so, <laughs> yeah exactly like that's interesting right so what did i want to say like i was like in a way like happy that i came up with this idea of making something like this like a motion graphics motion graphics yeah mm -hmm. and and then yeah, I, because i was thinking i was i was thinking what you when you showed that to me i thought like but you, I mean, that's coding. You can do that in After Effects in a few minutes, True. I think. Yeah, but well, yeah. maybe a bit longer. Go ahead. But yeah. Go ahead. What you no, I, <laughs> that's true. Um, but I did it, and I was happy that I could still do something like this, although I don't do it. And I think I've been better at doing this kind of thing than before. Like, I don't know why. Um, and, but at the same time, like, I don't want to do this. Like, this is so stressful to make things, you know, aligned perfectly. Ah, oh, because and, that has to be perfectly, yes, that, exactly, yeah. yes. I mean, I understand. like how I, like, misalign things could be interesting, but then it has to have its own style, right? It's not just one piece of thing that's broken, mm. but it has to break in a certain pattern, then it becomes more interesting. But then that's like all this design work that you have to like concentrate so much and you have this, you know, a few seconds of loop, but then yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can't yeah, really yeah. go anywhere with it. There, but mean, there, but I think like, I think there in this, what is what I'm trying to highlight is that I think aesthetics, we mentioned this in the last chat, I think in choreography, what I am is like, I'm not interested in 
how good are you uh, or anybody else as good as choreographer or, or as an artist aesthetically, but more of how uh, flexible uh, are you as choreographer or, or creator or somebody else? Because the aesthetics are very personal. So uh, I might like this is uh, this aesthetic that you show me or I might dislike them, but uh, and I think in art and tech, we were talking of this in the last chat because, yeah, I don't know exactly how to make a connection. What I'm trying to say is that I think the uh, the way how we bypass the aesthetics is because we work not alone. Um, because if you're working alone, then you will be constantly having a tick in your head like, I don't like this, I like this, I don't like this, I like this. When we are the two of us, it's so fast that you don't have the time to know if you like it or not. Nevertheless, you somehow have must like some something because you decide sometimes to keep some frame and then move. That's the way how I do. Sometimes I keep some frame and then I will free feel free to move or so. Um, so the decision making as a designer is still in place, but because the other person, I don't have so much freedom to stay there and judge me, right? Mm. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly like, uh, so yesterday, I don't know uh, if you saw it, but I uploaded a video of, like, I watched a practice and I talked through for one hour. No, I didn't. With, saw it. with my video and your video. Um, <laughs> and that's from uh, October 22nd. I think it's the first one after a node. Like last year. So how they have to send it? Yeah, but okay. Now to will put this video, uh, the link of this video in the yeah. comments. Yeah, and uh, why am I saying this? Uh, oh yeah, because it was funny because you appeared after like fifteen minutes, and yeah. and you also like disappeared at the end, and like what I was seeing is that myself in the video seems like constantly like judging themselves. I mean myself because I'm there alone and it's so awkward and you came in but I'm already like doing something and there was like nothing really happening between us and it's like this is like awkward practice I, I just randomly chose that practice but it's just so funny watching it because it's just so awkward but the best moment is when you asked like you are struggling to find like how to use uh, the switcher in live lab but you didn't ask immediately because it may maybe because you thought that I'm like really in the you know zone and you didn't even want flow. to ask flow, yeah. And then, then I think after 45 minutes, like you asked, like something is wrong with the switcher, and then but you know, like the conversation wasn't really there because I was trying to do something and you were not screen sharing at first. So I was not getting your problem. <laughs> and that, that part was like the best part of the but it's so practice. cool because I guess now you can see it side to side, but back in yeah. the practice you cannot see my screen. Exactly. Like as a viewer, I like, you know, like it's just like I, I can see what the problem is. And you should just talk, you know, like what are you doing for like 30 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> but, but this was this was really funny to watch. Um, Wait, when I, I went to watch it, that, that's interesting. Yeah. You should watch the one how that is, I how is it been, we should we should do this we should like plan one of like friday night kind of thingy you know like with popcorn and we just watch and comment this thing <laughs> Maybe. yeah <laughs> yeah because that like yesterday how i did was like i was really serious like more in the performative way but i think it's just funny to do it like you know with a beer and so. <laughs> how, how is how is how is called there, there's a genre of these things happen how is called this when people are doing this, no, where people comment on games or anything, there is a genre for this. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, like I I know in Japanese, but I don't know how it's called in English. Okay, but I know maybe we call mean. it like yeah. maybe we call it like in Japanese. How is it called in Japanese? Chikyo. 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 I don't know, but it's like you know. Uh... <laughs> Oh, live commentary. It's kind of boring. Yeah, super. I like more chico. Chico. Can you type that in English? Uh, wait. Or in alphabetic 
way, nor in simple way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's in the chat. Um, Chikyo. Chikyo, yeah. We could do that. Yes, we can do a playlist of Jikyo. That sounds oh, by the way, I was I was looking at the floor's uh, website and it's funny that she uh, like in her English website, like she highlights the, the chat with us. Oh, ah, yeah, show me the link. <laughs> I want to see. Hola, Flor, estás ahí? Hola. I have to go to English. I miss Belgian beers so much. <laughs> I miss Belgian beers. Oh, it's in her, it's in her news. <laughs> I can do the screen oh. sharing. Ah, in the English one, in the Spanish in one. The, there yeah, is, it's, huh? it's, yeah, she has like different contents. Ah, uh, yeah, in the English one, yes, we are there. Yeah, like. So if you have to go to English and then blog, and there's us <laughs> so cool that's very thank cool you. thank you thank you for the <laughs> shout out yes it's very nice okay i think i'll go and try to enjoy my night um yeah. so we keep in touch and Maybe. what do we want people to comment in the chat uh people, last time no one commented i think nobody comments that so somebody please comment about commenting <laughs> i don't know about which practice you want to <laughs> see the gq yeah but i mean you have to watch about 180 of course hours of, practices. of course they have their preference you know they have their they they like the one from december 2nd I don't know. This is this is this is so wrong. I always I feel this is this is so wrong. The last part where we close the the chat always is so wrong. It's like oh, it's like the, it's, this. We are trying to do our best and then user experience. We don't know how to do this, and then we always end up like just like it. So yeah, yeah. Uh, we're doing our best. We're doing the best. So the best practices. Yeah, just tell so, us tell us your favorite practice best practice. <laughs> we uh goodies, we should like we should keep on we, we, we will keep on thinking on goodies and how to offer goodies or something. Yes. How to engage for people to get something back. Yeah, maybe maybe people can comment like will you but guys we asked, have, will, we guys we would like to have some stickers? We have stickers. We well, you asked already what goodies you want, and I think no one, no one replied. No. Or oh, what do you guys would like? If somebody would like to hear something about something, we talk. What What did we talk today about it? Maybe we can do this sometimes. What did we talk today about? Communication, and yeah. gestures, communication gesture. Uh, now to one is robots. <laughs> now to one is robots. <laughs> um, yes. So maybe you guys tell us what you guys would like to, to hear more about. Yeah. Or not. What topic? What if they start talking about? I don't know something irrelevant. Well, nothing can be. Yeah, or maybe yeah. if some of you guys, if some of you guys have more information about like uh, gesture in relation to performance, performances, or performing yeah. arts, because I'm, I think I'm interested in this in these days. You know who is really good at this? Like uh, I remember too, Olivia from Brazil. She has her work around the gesture of dance. I think it's called the gesture of dance. Um, because I remember at some point when we were talking, maybe one year ago, she was referring to this research that he ha she has around this idea. And I was like, I mean, I understood what gesture means, you know, like as an English word somehow, but I never really give a thought until now that I'm trying to go into the core like of gesture as more as an ontological research. 
And, and she, she really has experience. She has been working on that maybe for four years. Wow. So, so she will yeah. be somebody to invite for the chat soon. Yeah, we, we, yeah. we want her to be here. <laughs> yes, Olivia. Uh, yeah, she said it will be. I guess she will have some time now. Okay, maybe cool. just be close here and we go to uh, yeah. backstage. So please write. I mean, what, whatever about gesture, what is gesture for you? And then please like the video and subscribe. And uh, my poster, my YouTube poster will be in Cologne uh, from tomorrow. So please check that out and uh, see you next time. Thank you for being there. Ciao.